life force and seven bodies are three. The astral body dwells within a magnetic field. This magnetic field acts like the air surrounding the physical body. There is always magnetic force around you. You continue to breathe in and breathe out. You need to be aware of this incoming and outgoing magnetic force. And when you are aware of this, then you can neither be powerful nor powerless. You have transcended both. Then you enter the fourth body. This is your mental body. Thoughts come in and go out. As you breathe in, thoughts come in and this is the moment when original thinking is born in you. And the moment of breathing out are the moments when no original thought is born in you. When original thoughts are taking birth within you, breathing will come to a cessation. This is the only corresponding phenomenon. When thoughts are going out, nothing happens. This is almost a dead state. So when you are aware of the incoming and outgoing thought, you transcend this fourth body and thus not the doors of the fifth body. Up to the fourth body, everything is quite clear and there is no difficulty to understand because you somehow have the experience of each of these bodies. However, beyond the four, things become strange, yet still something can be understood. So when you transcend the fourth body, you will understand it more. The fifth body is the spiritual body. It is life that creates the atmosphere for it. For the fifth body, life acts just like breath, love and hate, magnetic force and the thought in the lower body. Therefore, in the fifth body, incoming is the movement of life and outgoing is visualized at the moment of death. With this body, you come to realize that life is not that is something within you. It comes into you and goes out as well. Thus life exists outside you as well. It only comes in and goes out in certain moments. The movement is exactly like breath. It is because of this fifth body, both breath and pran are considered as synonymous. The word pran is significant for the fifth body. It refers to life that is coming in and then going out. This is the reason that there is a constant fear of death. As human beings, we are always aware that death is nearby, just waiting around the corner. This feeling of death, the feeling of insecurity awaits you. In the fifth body, feeling is very weak and utter darkness prevails. It is because you are not yet aware of this. In the process of transformation, when you reach the fifth body and become aware of this body, then you can come to experience that birth, life and death are just the breath in this fifth body. When you are aware of this, then you know that you cannot die. Your body is formed with the interaction of over many stone. Your parents have the mechanism to form the body. But that which enters the body has nothing to do with the parents. Khalil Gibran in Prophet has mentioned an important aspect of it. He spoke through the character, the disciple Al-Mitra and the master Al-Mustafa. Al-Mitra asked, Master, what about children? The master says, children are born through you, not from you. When you enter the room, you come through the door. You go out through the door. You do not come from the door. From refers to a place from where you come. And through refers to a mechanism through which you enter and exit. Your parents had the mechanism for your body to come into existence. 
but that which enters into the body has nothing to do with your appearance. When you are aware of this, you know that you cannot die. Also, you are not born. Life and death are not the inherent phenomena. These are an outward phenomena happening to you. You have never been alive or dead. You have never been alive or dead. You are the one who transcends both. However, this feeling of transcendence can come to you only when you are aware of the force of life and death in the fifth body, the spiritual body. Sigmund Freud mentioned somewhere that somehow he got the glimpse of this. Freud was not interested in yoga, otherwise he would have understood the phenomena clearly. This he called as the will to die. He also said that everyone longs for life, but at some time or the other he also longs for death. Man has will to live and will to die. However, the Western mind considers this as utter absurdity. The argument is based on the fact that how these contradictory wills would, could ever exist in a man simultaneously. Freud argued that there is always the possibility of suicide and it is because of this that there comes the will to die. Such is not the case with the animals. No animal is aware of the fifth body, so animals cannot commit suicide. For suicide, one thing is essential, awareness of life. And animals are not aware of life. Another thing that is essential for suicide is the unawareness of death. Awareness of life and an unawareness of death. Animal cannot commit suicide because they are not aware of life. Man can commit suicide. He is aware of life and unaware of death. When you are aware of death, then you cannot commit suicide. For a Buddha, suicide is utter nonsense. He knows that you cannot kill yourself. You can only treat him. Death belongs to the fifth plane. Death comes from a particular energy and also is the outcome of the particular energy. This coming and going happens in you. So when you are identified with the first, then you can commit the second. When you are identified with life and if life is becoming almost impossible, then you can decide to commit suicide. Thus asserting is another aspect of the fifth body. You will hardly find an individual who had not thought of committing suicide at some time or the other. Death is the other side of life. When you are too much obsessed with life and deny death, then you can kill Anna. By doing so, you fulfill your death wish. People like Hitler, Mussolini, etc were very much afraid of death, so they projected this on others. Killing others gives a feeling that he is more powerful than death. Thus he thinks he has transcended death. What, can, what he can do to others cannot be done to him. This is a projection. But this always comes back to you. So when you kill so many people, then in the end you are sure to commit suicide. This is how projection comes back to you. In the fifth body, both life and death coming to you, one cannot get attached to either of the two. When you are attached, you are not accepting the polarity in its totality. You are bound to get sick. Up to the fourth body, everything was easy. However, it is most difficult to conceive death and then accept it as another aspect of life. To accept both life and death are two sides of the same coin is most difficult. This is pranic existence in the fifth body. From now on, things are very difficult. After the fifth ego drops, no more ego. You are one with all. The sixth body 
is the cosmic body. Everything is cosmic now. So the polarity takes the form of creation and dissolution. Hindus call it Srishti and Pralaya. The creation and dissolution. Sikhs call it the Sikh religion. Guru Gobind Singh called it Hariyam and Kariyam. Creation and dissolution. This is the reason that from the sixth body onwards, everything is very difficult. According to Hindus, these forces are called Brahma the creator and Shiva the destroyer. Brahma is concerned with creator, Vishnu is considered with preservation and Shiva with the destruction or dissolution. This body is a vast sphere of creation and dissolution. The forces of creation and diso dissolution. Every moment creation comes to you, and then every moment everything goes back in dissolution. So when a master says that he has seen the creation and dissolution, he is speaking of the sick body. Ego is no more. Everything is coming in and going out. This is the cosmic form of Krishna that he had shown to Arjun on the battlefield of Mahabharata. Everything comes out of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or creator just like the entire web comes out of the mouth of the spider and then web is created all around and at the end everything dissolves in that cosmic oneness you are one with it a star comes into existence so is your birth that is coming and when the star disappears it means you are going out According to Hindu mythology, one creation represents one breath of the Creator Brahma. This is one cosmic breath of Creator. With one breath of Brahma, creation comes into existence, a star is born, and thus comes in the entire creation. And when breath goes out, a star dies, and the entire existence dissolves into non-existence. There is existence and non-existence. The sixth body is no more egocentric. Instead, it is cosmic. It is at this plane that everything is known about the creation and dissolution. When the masters speak of creation and dissolution, they are speaking of the sixth body. The great Judo-Christian or Babylon or Syrian or Hindu aspect of dissolution, the end all belongs to the sixth body. There is no more an individual experience. This is cosmic experience. At this plane, you will envision everything as your own death. So a Mahabir cannot even kill an aunt. This is no more principle of non-violence. It is because of his own death. Because somehow or the other you are the existence. You carry within you the entire existence. You are connected. There is a power within that knows beyond our knowings. We are not aliens nor as a stranger's joint. We are bound to each other by a cosmic force. It is not a question of non-violence. It is because of his own death. Such an experience belongs to the sixth body. One earth dissolves, another comes into existence. Even at this plane one gets attached, humanity must not die. But that which has come into existence must dissolve, including even the humanity. Before dissolution, before dissolution life begins to take shape somewhere else. At this plane your experience, the dictum, Aham Brahmasmi, I am the ever-expanding consciousness, the oft use assertion of Hindus is important. Both Brahma and Shiva are two polarities, the creation and dissolution. But Vishnu, the preserver, is beyond the polarity. This is the significance of the Hindu trinity. The two are the polarity and Vishnu is beyond the polarity. That is why he is considered the highest in the trinity of Hindus. This is the trinity of witnessing. When you are aware of the two, creation and dissolution or Brahma and Shiva, then the third is known to you. 
This is the reason which Vishnu is most significant of the Trinity. Brahma is the creator, yet he is not worshipped. So adding, there are only one or two temples of Brahma. He should be worshipped, but he is not. And Shiva has the largest number of worshippers. He is seen everywhere. Just as stone can symbolize Shiva, human mind is so afraid of death that one cannot escape Shiva, so he is worshipped everywhere. Of these, Vishnu is the most substantial. That is why Hindus have the incarnation of as Ram and Krishna. These are the incarnations of Vishnu. Brahma creates for Vishnu. Shiva destroys for Vishnu. Because it is through the polarities the transcendence can get its work done. So Shiva and Brahma are two breaths of Vishnu. Brahma is the incoming breath and Shiva is the outgoing breath of Vishnu. Because creation means something is coming in you and dissolution means something coming out of you. This is what is meant by Krishna's cosmic form. Thus Vishnu is the transcendental reality in the sixth body. When you reach the seventh plane or the body, things become even more difficult. Buddha's, Buddha called this seventh body as Nirvani, Kaya or body. This is also called a state of enlightenment. The seventh body is the manifestation of the absolute truth. This is the last state. There is no more creation and dissolution after this. Only being and non-being is. In the seventh body, there is creation of someone else. In the seventh body, there is creation of someone else. Both the being and the non-being are a few. In this body, being and non-being are two breaths. One is not identified with either of the two. It is for only those who have reached the seventh body and given a new religion. And in the end, only two words remain, being and non-being. No more the language. Buddha spoke the language of non-being, the outgoing brain. To Buddha, nothing else is the reality. He uses the negative language. Shankar, on the other hand, uses the positive word. He chooses the incoming breath, the B. These are the only choice as far as language is concerned.